Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, kind of piggybacking off of last week's podcast where I talked about healed or coping. Today, I want to talk about whether or not you're triggered, upset, or annoyed. This was inspired by a comment I got over on Discord. If you'd like to support my content, Discord is something I really recommend because it gives you a community, it gives you events to do, and it supports the content here on YouTube. Now, before we get into it, I just need to do a disclaimer because I've noticed a lot of new people coming on to my channel, which I really appreciate. I definitely want to grow the community and a lot of people might not know what I do. I'm just a person on the internet. I discovered something about myself and I feel as a neurodivergent queer woman in the world who has relationships from like gender to spirituality to sort of politics to everything. I find I found myself really confused about my place on this planet. What am I doing here? What is the point of all of this? Was I born just to pay taxes? The answer is yes, but also no. <laughs> That's not why you're here on the planet. You are just a part of the ecosystem, right? We're all like a little blip in history. And right now you have to live out your individual life and you've got to do it hopefully with joy. So I find, I found in my life joy and I'm just here to give some tools. You know, I've been a content creator for so long, but for so much of my life, I really didn't have a handle on myself. I had an understanding of myself that was usually through the lens of the people around me, right? I call it like a bubble. We often use the word bubble in, in society. You hear it on TV, you hear, you hear it on shows, you hear it in podcasts. Bubble, bubble, bubble. What's a bubble? A bubble is just an ecosystem, right? A bubble can be as small as your individual thought process to as big as a collective thought process. And I think often we feel shame, meaning from our bubbles, right, from the people around us to fit into a niche, to fit into a bubble or an expectation. And if you don't fit, if you're born into a place where you don't fit like I was as a queer kid born into a conservative bubble, it can feel like unaliving yourself is the only choice you have or just letting it all go to waste or spending all your money and giving up or like, what's the point? So here I am going on this introspective journey, discovering so many things about myself, mostly flaws and also some really good things as well, right? Pat on my back. I did pretty well for a person who struggled a lot on her own. Now in that throughout that journey, right? I discovered these tools to kind of give myself a grounding. We always want to be grounded in reality, but reality is very subjective if you have, well, depending on where you're from. So you have the little T-truth, that subjective truth where we have a relationship with our consciousness and then directly what we see and understand and what we can process. And then capital T-truth, the reality that exists whether you and I disagree with it or not, right? Now, whether or not we'll have access to that, right? That's why we're always discussing what are we doing on the planet? How did we come to be here? It's why some people believe in God and some people don't believe in God. We all have different beliefs that we often pretend or convince ourselves is a fact, but do is it? Do you know that? So Instead of becoming crazy and becoming like a conspiracy theorist, don't do that. Instead of becoming so tied down to your bubble that you become hateful and bitter of the world, don't do that. I want to give you guys another option, which is to be at peace with the self to the best of your ability. We're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking for a little bit of calmness to allow yourself an opportunity to exist without feeling like the wor world is like a complete burden. And I think in order to do that, you have to know and you have to figure out, am I upset in this situation? Am I annoyed in this situation? Or am I literally medically triggered, right? We're going to have a conversation about knowing those three things about the self, because just like last week's podcast, where we had to figure out whether or not we were healed or coping, and I am so glad. So many of you related so hard to that subject matter. I really appreciate the feedback. Please leave me a comment letting me know what you think. I understand it is very easy to be bitter. It is very easy to give up. It is very, I, hello, ma'am. Okay. I am older than you and I've spent 20 years of my life wanting to unalive myself. I understand, but you don't have to stay there. You can get out of that bubble. You just have to get the tools and you have to be willing to do it. You have to need to do it. Capital N, not a want, capital W. A want is something that's, you know, oh, that would be nice. But a need is something you need or you're not going to reach your Maslow's hierarchy of needs or your basic needs. You know, you're not going to reach the things you really need to feel fulfilled, right? To have joy. So I have some notes here. And again, thank you to the person who left the comment on the Discord to, to do this video because I think it's a really good idea, right? Now, okay, I've created a scenario for you. So get ready. You're with a group of friends. You're chilling. You're relaxing. Everything is going great, right? Everything is good vibes. And then 
there's one person in the group who's just joined. Uh, let's say it's Susan. Hi, Susan. Oh my gosh, Susan, how are you? Susan comes in and she's like, hey girls, how are you? How is everybody? How is everybody? Oh my gosh, you all look fabulous, wonderful. Oh my gosh, is that you? She's talking to you. And she goes, oh my gosh, you. Look at you. Are you wearing that silly like uh, shirt again? Oh, the one that makes you look like you're more um, unattractive than you wish you were. And you're like, oh, just kidding. <laughs> and she goes on and she's flippantly talking to you. And you're like, oh, was that a joke? Like more, uh, like what, what just happened? Weird, right? Like totally, even the, just weird. Then the day goes on and Susan, you are laughing and everything's kind of fine. And then Susan goes, oh my gosh. Oh, you know what I just thought the other day? I was thinking of people who are just so silly. They cannot even do basic math. Like, like you. Yeah, you. I, oh my gosh, you're so silly. And then you're like, oh, I'm, Okay, that's like the second remark that's kind of weird. Okay, you're going on, the day's continuing. Susan looks at you again and goes, oh my gosh, girls, do you know the other day I saw someone who reminded me just like you. They were walking around and they just looked so silly the way they walked. Ooh, 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 ooh. So silly, right? Just like you. It reminds me of just like you. And you're sitting there and you're like, okay, hold up. What's happening? Did Susan just come at me three times? Does she just come at me three times? But it was like subtle and kind of funny and she's smiling and she's kind of like, okay. So now you're starting to get peaked. You're like, mm, okay, this is like weird. Why are we doing this? How about this? The day goes on. You guys are having a conversation about politics, something very serious and personal. And Susan is sitting there and laughing and goes, oh my gosh, you know what I hate is people who are so dumb when it comes to the environment. Oh my, can you believe they think like the planet's overpopulated? Oh wait, don't you believe that? <laughs> so stupid it's like okay like sure I get it we disagree on politics and we disagree on maybe global warming or climate change or population like that's okay you know live and let live I get it but again like why is she coming for me the day continues on and then eventually Susan starts to just like be a little meaner right maybe she says things like you know oh my gosh every time I think about people who are just you know struggling and they're so depressed and they just have no clue what to do with their hair. I just, I think of you, but then I know you're so lovely that you'll get over it one day, right? You'll, you'll look good one day. It's like, okay. <laughs> I get it. You're like picking me out. You're targeting me. You're insulting me. You're doing it with a smile. It's with a group of people. So there's witnesses, but you're so willing to do it. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe she's not picking on me. She would never deliberately pick on me in front of people, right? Everyone's laughing. No one's saying anything. Am I crazy? Is Susan crazy? Who's crazy? You start to question yourself. Why is Susan going for me? Why is she saying it with a smile? Why is she making little jabs at who I am as a person? I thought we were friends. What's going on? And at first you go, okay, she's just kind of being annoying. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed with the way that she's deciding to conduct herself. Okay, this is kind of rude. Maybe I'll stand up for myself. Maybe I'll say like, hey, Susan, back off a little bit, huh? Maybe I'll say something to her. But you let it go and it keeps going. And then it escalates. Maybe she says something like, let's say you're in a relationship and Susan goes, Oh, you know, have you thought about breaking up with your boyfriend yet? I heard the other day that you wanted the last pickle on the plate and he took it from you. Honestly, abuse. It's like, okay, obviously not abuse, but also why are you coming for my relationship? And then you say, Susan, I think that's it. Okay, you've insulted me, but now you're coming for my relationship over something that's obviously silly. Like you need to stop. Oh my gosh, why are you so upset? Oh, are, am I getting to you? I didn't mean it. I, I didn't mean it personally. I just, I was pointing out what's true. Like, I know you're upset, but I'm, I, I don't want you to be upset. I just feel like maybe you're a little sensitive around the subject matter because of like everything happening in your relationship. And then you sit there and you're like, bro, there is nothing happening in my relationship. Why are you coming for my relationship? And again, it escalates. And Susan's like, um, well, we all kind of know what's going on in the relationship, right? Like we, we know. And then you're sitting there like, okay, am I getting gaslit right now? I am confused. I am upset. Now I've gone from annoyed to upset. It is escalating. And then let's say the group doesn't even know, but you actually have PT PTSD from bullying in your past because you know girls in high school be vicious and then all of a sudden you have this moment where your brain goes from understanding the situation's weird to getting annoyed to escalating and then asking to de-escalate and not in not and her not respecting your consent so now you're upset which you get to be okay you get to be annoyed you get to be upset susan's been very frustrating but then something happens and there's a switch in your brain 
and you start to go back to high school and all of a sudden you're in that group of girls and all of a sudden you can feel all their looks and their judgments and you can feel the bullying and the years of torment you experience as a teenager and all of a sudden, boom, we're triggered. We are medically, mental health triggered. And now you're in a situation where Susan is no longer Susan exactly, but she is a reincarnation of your childhood. And in that situation, just like in high school, no one defended you. Just like in high school when all those girls bullied you, Susan and all your friends who are hearing Susan do not come to your defense. They do not protect you. Instead, they probably start to go, well, we have heard some things and maybe, you know, maybe we've decided that, you know, you're not the greatest person. Maybe Susan's influenced them to come at you. And now again, it's just escalating. Or Maybe the girls are trying to calm you down, but it's too late. You're over the edge. You're triggered. They're trying to tell you like, hey, girl, like, don't listen to her. She's crazy. Like, don't pay attention to Susan. Susan, you need to leave. Maybe the girls are literally kicking Susan out, but it's too late. You are like sunken into your body. You are now feeling like you're feeling afraid and concerned about everyone in your vicinity to the point where you need to leave. It's too much. I would like to leave. Right? Right. These are like three stages of escalation, right? And one of them is medical. The other one is just being a normal human. Not that being medically triggered isn't normal, but it is one of those things that is unique to the uh, relationship that medically like triggered people can can experience, right? This isn't like people who are not triggered don't get triggered, right? Even though the internet uses the word triggered as like you're upset, you can actually get triggered unless you get triggered. Like it's a real phenomenon. It's very interesting and it, it comes with a lot of distortion, but also could be triggered in a valid way. Sometimes we're triggered from a valid experience because it's so similar to what we experienced before. And then sometimes on accident, the people in our lives that love us might actually, I'm sorry, accidentally hit a switch that triggers us. And then we can sit there and go, okay, hold on. I know I'm triggered, but I know you didn't mean it in that way. Let me deescalate myself, right? Though I think that's often pretty, um, pretty common that it's accidental. It is also pretty common that it's often from people who ignore your mental boundaries. I've noticed that even in my bubble with my family, since they don't really believe in the mental illnesses I've been diagnosed with, often when I try to explain it to them, the modern siblings get it. The progressive-ish siblings or the siblings who kind of get it, get it. But the ones who don't really struggle to not further trigger me or upset me or, you know, move, you know, get me upset because they literally think they're helping by like pushing me more, which I understand even I've made the mistake in the past of like trying to love somebody harder and it actually makes it worse for them. So I've learned to really back off and listen to people when they've told me you need to love me this way. And if it's within my values, I absolutely will. Um, otherwise, you know, you create boundaries. But in this situation, I'm trying to show you that you can be in a totally normal situation, just a group of gals hanging out, your friends, you're chilling, and then all of a sudden there's an escalation because one person in the group is poking. There's always an annoying person in a social situation, usually. Let's say it's more than 10 people. There's going to be somebody. And that somebody has a tendency to rub people the wrong way. It can go from annoyance to I'm upset to now I'm possibly triggered, whether they intended it or not. Whether they were being malicious with the intention of triggering you or just being malicious in the way that they wanted to show power, there's something there that is usually starts with lacking consideration, right? I don't think people who are reasonable just get upset because. I think you get upset because there's something that's going on or maybe you get upset because, and I, I don't mean like um upset about the conversation. I don't mean upset in the situation. I mean like it's okay to be upset, but I think sometimes the reason it happens is because somebody's acting out of turn. So usually conversations will escalate because now it's either not good faith, so something bad has happened, or it's it's someone who really wants to get a word in and they just don't want you to talk. But like you see how there's like an issue that's occurring. I'm not saying people are evil because conversations escalate. Okay, I'm on the internet and I do panels. But I'm saying often when things escalate, it's because there is like a desire to be heard more than there is a desire to be understood. Often I think the most cohesive relationships are ones where people aim to be understood, which is why when I do panels, I understand that that's a debate and debates are meant to be heard and won, not to be understood. So I get it. But when I do one-on-one -on -one conversations, if you'll notice, it's very much about seeing that other person. Who is irrelevant? Who is erudite? Who is anybody that I talk to? Who are they? 
right? I'm not trying to debate them into the ground when I'm talking one-on-one. I'm trying to understand them. But if I'm on a debate panel, we're there to talk about issues usually so I understand, right? See how the context can change the allowance for the escalation, but it's not the same. Getting upset because you're passionate about justice is not the same as getting upset because somebody in your intimate friend group is poking you and insulting you and, and belittling you. That is not the same thing. So first you have to know the context. What is the situation that is allowing this to escalate, right? If you join my Discord, which I highly recommend, you will see that we get heated and passionate in the conversations. Sometimes we yell and sometimes we talk over each other. Nobody there is supposed to come in bad faith. Everyone there is supposed to be in good faith and assume that people who are there want the best for themselves or other people. And we have these conversations that get passionate about ideas normally. And even sometimes one will be like, hey, like you sound like a sussy person. That's even in good faith. But again, depending on the context, escalation can just be a sign of something very, very, very bad happening, which could be um, related to like interpersonal relationships more than idea relationships. So again, depending on how you're socializing, the escalation and the de-escalation is going to depend on the context, right? I don't mind if I'm on a panel and it's escalating and it's wild and it's for views and people like it. Like, I don't care, right? Let's WWE this like conversation. But in this situation where you're with a group of friends who are supposed to be seeing you and humanizing you, well, the last thing you want to do is escalate into a fight, right? Now, in real life, in personal relationships, you will upset people around you. It will happen. You might even trigger somebody you love. But knowing that and gaining the tools to not do that is important. And then you as the person who's being upset, triggered, annoyed, you need to know why that's happening to you. And that's the hard part. How do you know it's happening to you? Well, first go to therapy, right? And then come back to this channel and do philosophy stuff. Do existential dread stuff with me. Do conscientious stuff with me. But like if you're doing therapy, you're talking about mental health. Is there a mental illness? Or was I raised in a traumatic situation where I have like CPTSD? Do I need CBT? Do I need DBT? Do I have borderline? Do I have a personality disorder? Do I have, am I neurodivergent and I'm just on the spectrum? And so I have very unique uh, requirements for me to like regulate myself. There's so much to know about yourself. And it really starts with the five things I always talk about. Your mental health, your physical health, your spiritual health, your money health, because you know, you gotta survive in the world. It is what it is, girls. And then what kind of a person are you? What's your trope? What's your stereotype? What's your like, what's the thing? Like what category of person do you fit into, right? Because not everyone's gonna understand Brittany. Not everyone's gonna vibe. Some people don't even like how I talk, generally speaking. Some people don't like the way I look. It is what it is. But for the people that get it, they get it, right? My work is for people who can understand the way I talk. I think everyone in the world talks differently to appeal to different kinds of people. If you find that you're listening to my content and you're like, I don't get her, that's great. Now you know one more thing about yourself. You don't understand people like Brittany. So you need to go find people who are like you so you can understand them. Because ultimately, I'm saying the same thing every, I think, good person is saying. Get better, love yourself, know yourself, be responsible, and also be kind to others. But I'm saying it in a way that only maybe certain people can hear it, and you're, you need it in, in just the right way. So you're in a situation where you're feeling in conflict with yourself. So again, you might watch my videos and feel very annoyed with me. That's fair, but why are you annoyed? You might even feel very upset with me. Why are you upset? You might even watch my content and get triggered. Why are you triggered? What is it about another human being on the planet that, that makes your brain feel in conflict, right? And it's not just about me. This is a tool I'm giving you to use with other people, your, your, your family, your relatives, your coworkers, the people you have to see on the day-to-day, -day, the people you see on the bus, the people you see on the train, the people you see on the subway. Who or not who, but why are we having this conflict in our brains? So again, for me, I had to think about a situation in which my emotions were valid, justified, and still needed work. So again, let's say you're in a situation where you're talking to your religious parents, been there, done that, and they say things like, trans people are just not real. And you say, well, I know a person who's trans and therefore they're real. And they're like, that's not how it works. Just because they say they're trans doesn't mean they're trans. I was like, well, when people say there's a God, even though we have no evidence of a God, does that mean there's a God? And they're like, yes, because I have faith in a God. I was like, cool, I have faith in trans people. And they're like, no, that's not how it works. And I understand the disconnect. They might be different. They might be real to you. I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist, but I believe in trans people because I think transness is a relationship you're having with your gender and it's only about you. 
and you is society. And so it is reflected in society, as is religion. We have religious freedom in this country. Religion is reflected in government, right? So transness should follow. If people are trans and they're part of the citizenship, it would follow that trans people would be in involved in like what we do in terms of the law. For me, it's like not that hard. The government represents its people. But I can understand how some people see those as completely different things. But let's say for you, transness is like a real relationship you're having with your identity. It's really, really important. Same as being religious. And let's say you have a religious person who's like transness isn't real. And you have a trans person who's an atheist saying religious people aren't real. And you're all fighting each other. It could escalate into from annoyance to being upset to even being triggered. I've seen religious people become so afraid that they're going to get ostracized, so afraid that someone's going to unalive them, so afraid that they're going to lose their civil rights, that they become like mentally unstable. I've seen that happen to my queer and LGBT people. I've seen that happen to myself where it feels so scary. And I'm in a situation where I'm annoyed because I'm being discounted as, you know, valid. And then I'm getting upset because, oh my gosh, are you coming for me? And then maybe I even get triggered because I feel like, oh my gosh, it's happening again. The world is coming for me, right? Like, why is this happening? Why am I getting this feeling like the whole world is caving down on me? It's this relationship we're having with what's real. And what's the most real is that humans are going to human. So they're going to do things that feel right to them. They're going to do things that feel good to them, including us. We're going to do things that feel good to us, whether they are or not, right? So the way that I think about it is how do I make sure that I'm healthy, happy, and kind? How do I make sure that even when I'm upset, I'm being healthy about it? Even when I'm upset, I'm being kind about it. Even when I'm upset, okay, I'm being kind of happy about it. I'm finding my joy in being upset. If you're like me and you have borderline or PTSD, you get triggered and you either have done the steps to de-escalate or you haven't. Now, okay, with my borderline, totally. I've been good for like four years. I'm chilling. It's not even a main character in my life. But my PTSD is something I'm still currently working on. Maybe you relate. It's like a wound inside of me. And I don't always have the tools to de-escalate the situation, though I recover in about 24 to 48 hours from the initial like upset trigger, right? Which is pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I've been triggered twice in the last year or two, which is pretty good. Um, Actually, year. And then prior to that, I was good for like three years. So the last year, I got triggered twice. And I remember exactly the two times I got triggered. One of them was on the the internet super embarrassing but I right away apologized sent out dms I was super aware and I took accountability for it people really mistook that trigger for a borderline trigger but it's totally different and don't let the world tell you what's going on with your mental health you got to talk to your therapist you got to talk to yourself you got to do your steps so I of course knew it wasn't borderline I knew it was my ptsd we were literally talking about assault I am an assault victim. It's not that hard to do the math guys like a board you know what I'm saying like people just like they don't think when they talk about mental health they just think like oh she's triggered and then people either treated me like I was triggered casually triggered like oh you're upset or that I was mentally triggered they don't even understand what that means that means I was in a situation where I couldn't process if I was directly being harmed or not or at the verge of being harmed because right after that discussion followed which I shouldn't have joined when I was triggered right but I didn't I moved so quickly that was bad I shouldn't have done that I got a bunch of emails and messages and comments from people who said I deserved my assault. People telling me that like, oh, it's going to happen again. People telling me like horrible things. And in that moment, I had to remind myself. I had to de-escalate and tell myself like, oh, okay, so we were initially annoyed because the conversation was very dismissive of victims. Then we were um, like upset and angry because it was completely distorting the lived experience of victims. And then we were triggered and we didn't even realize we had moved from annoyed to upset to triggered very quickly in the span of probably an hour of listening to this live show. And then all of a sudden I was calling into the live show and all of a sudden I was like very upset, right? Because again, when I'm hearing someone on the internet, especially someone I have a connection to, use words that move their audience in a direction that sends victims um, scathing comments about whether or not they're uh, capable of handling an assault, there's like something there that's very upsetting. And I think that I was justified in feeling upset and justified in being um, annoyed. But of course, we want to avoid the trigger. So let's talk about the validity of the trigger 
it's fair. It happened. That's life. But we want to actually avoid it. We don't need to avoid being annoyed or upset. It's valid to feel upset when someone is discounting an experience that you, th in a way, in a way, this is very important, in a way that's not just about their story, because maybe they have a different story from you, but encourages their audience to then discount you as a victim as well. That's what's really important, right? I became like a little villain in that moment. And I think it's important to recognize, like, just because you got over your assault in the way that you did doesn't mean every victim has to follow suit. And then there's this idea of like, what does it even mean to be healed? Like I'm actively working on my PTSD, right? I understand that, okay? I know it's not healed. Like I'm not claiming it is. I'm very transparent about that. But in that moment, we still want to avoid the trigger. So what's my responsibility? Well, my responsibility is to definitely seek out mental health counseling. And now that I'm reestablishing myself in Europe, that's something that my partner and I have talked about. Like, hey, eventually I'm going to have to get this again. And I'm going to have to figure out what to do for the PTSD. Because, uh, you know, I just that's the one thing I'm still working on. And so that's the first step is acknowledging that we still have work to do. And then the second one is to try not to get triggered again by understanding and stopping ourselves after being upset because it is, again, valid to be upset. It is valid, right? Now, what you do when you're upset is also what counts. Do you calm yourself down? Do you have the conversation? Can you have the conversation? You know, I've had this conversation a thousand times and this was the one time I got triggered and it's also probably going to be the one time people remember because people always remember the extremes, right? Right. But I know I'm capable of having this conversation in a rational way. So I'm not going to discount myself and tell myself like, oh, you can never have this conversation again. No, 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 no. You not only can I have the conversation, but I can have it again and again and again as many times as I need. Okay. But through the process, understand that it could escalate to a trigger. And it's not the conversation that triggers you, right? It's not that it's just a conversation. It's the way that your brain processes it and moves so quickly back into the memory of the trauma and you just didn't have time to stop it almost. Imagine like, imagine you're relaxing, you're having a conversation, it's totally fine, it's a little upsetting, but then something happens too quickly and before you realize it, it's flown past you and you're back in that memory. Imagine you see the memory coming at you like a tidal wave and you're just like, um, avoid it. You jump into the air and you fly above the ocean. As the memory washes over, it doesn't hit you. It's that kind of thing where the memory washes over and you can view the memory without being swallowed up by the memory. Does that make sense? So in that moment, the wave washed over me before I could even process it. So there I was trapped. There was no way getting, you know, there's no way. It just is what it is. So now you ride out the wave. Like I said, I ride my waves for about 24 to 48 hours and then I'm back to normal and then I'm back to being embarrassed. And I'm like, oh my God, that happened. Oh my God. So it's not that we want to avoid the memory. It's not that we want to pretend it doesn't exist. We just want to be above it instead of swallowing inside of the trauma. Because again, though the trigger might be valid in the sense that it happened and that's what mental health is all about and that's why some people don't want to date people with PTSD because it's very difficult. It's also something that you as the individual don't have to live with for the rest of your life in the same way that you see other people do it. You can work on it to the point where it does become a sort of memory, right? I've met so many PTSD um, victims who are now, you know, in recovery. They're doing great. They're thriving. They are definitely my aspiration. Like I have this goal. I see them. I know I can do it. I have borderline. I've been in remission for four years. I hope that I inspire you to know that you can totally have a good relationship with your borderline. I want that for my PTSD. But again, it always comes down to accountability. This is something that happened in my brain. It happened in mine. You know, oh my God, what's these? Hold on. Ooh, okay, so I think there is this narrative on the internet that if you're upset, you're wrong. If you're um, annoyed, you're wrong. If you're triggered, you're wrong. It's not about being wrong. It's about knowing why. Why am I upset? And why am I um, annoyed? Because it could be justified or not. And then why did I get triggered? Maybe it's justified. Maybe it's not. Sometimes the people around us don't even realize how they contribute to these to these moments in other people's lives. They don't even realize like, hey, just because you're pretending to be sociopaths and you're pre pretending not to have feelings and you're pretending to be the ones who bring the truth doesn't mean you're bringing the truth. Sometimes you're just being like an asshole, okay? Sometimes it's not about you being the quote unquote logical one. Sometimes you're just being cruel. I think you're fat. Yeah. That's it's it. just my opinion. <laughs> I'm not bullying you. I'm just giving you a bit. I think you're ugly. I think you're fat. I think you're stupid. Yeah, and I get it. As a person who's pretty harsh myself, I try really hard to listen to people when they give me that feedback. But of course, because 
you know, sometimes depending on the situation, like if it's one to one, you can tell them, hey, I don't like the way you're talking about this. And if you're talking to me, can you change the way you're talking about it? But if you're talking to a crowd like a YouTuber does, that's different. And I'm not going to hold YouTubers accountable for the way they talk to very many different people, which I've stated a hundred times. I do not mind how YouTubers talk on their shows, myself included, because we don't know who's listening, right? So we can't ever change our language perfectly. But when discussing one-on-one -on -one with people, I try my best to listen to the person I'm talking to. So if you're hanging out with Susan and you're a girl group, and you say, hey, Susan, can you de-escalate? You're hurting my feelings. And Susan escalates and escalates and escalates. Well, at some point, it's kind of malicious on their end. And you are incredibly justified in your feelings, right? So it's always this conversation we have to have with ourselves, which is honesty and transparency about our own feelings. Let's say you're in a group where I'm trying to think of a good example. Let's say, um, okay, let's say you're a super modest person, which is super valid, Okay. You're very modest. No, no, no. Ooh, let's reverse it. Let's reverse it. Let's say you're really sex positive like I am. Let's say you're super into nudist groups and hanging out with people and being cool and like body positivity and like you're all about it. And you show up to the beach and there's an event where like super modest women are showing up and they're covered from head to toe. And this really bothers some sense of your like feminist energy. And you're like, mm, I don't really like this. I'm upset that these women are dressing themselves and being modest because I don't believe that they're doing it for them. I think they're doing it for a man. See how you're getting upset? Now, that's valid in one way because it's through your bubble, your lens. Maybe you're allowed to be upset because you feel like your values are being challenged. But if you ask those women, hey, are you modest because you want to be? And one of the women says, actually, yeah, I really am. This is why I joined the group. I, I found that I feel more at peace when I'm covered up. Well, maybe then it will align with your feminist mantra and your feminist values because you'll say, oh, yeah, that's pretty feminist to like choose how you dress. And then you're less upset. Or maybe you're just kind of annoyed because, well, no matter how you spin it, these women are doing it for the men in their lives. They are doing it because of a God. They are doing it because of a culture. They don't even want to, but they think it's their duty. Well, then you're a little annoyed and maybe you're even upset on their behalf. But ultimately, what are you going to do about that? You're hopefully not going to get triggered and ruin your day over someone else's choices, right? But it could happen. Maybe you have some trauma associated. Maybe you go right into the mental health, you know, moment of being triggered. The idea is to know yourself well enough to know why you're even experiencing these three things in the first place, right? Why are we having a relationship with this thing that makes us upset or doesn't make us upset? There's plenty of good reasons to be upset, guys. But how we de-escalate the why, all of it, this all starts with knowing ourselves. Who are we and what are we doing here? So for me, one of the greatest tools I picked up in life was identifying the why of everything I did. Why did I do that? 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 So I wasn't just robotically living my life, robotically getting upset, robotically, especially as a neurodivergent person that has like an insane sense of like, this isn't okay. Like this isn't values. I understand like some of us are too obsessed with justice over here. But there is a deep-seated need we have to, to help people. But sometimes, again, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. Our desires to help actually hinder us and the people around us. So again, ask yourself, am I upset with the idea this person is sharing or am I upset with their character as a person? Because I, for one, try to hold those two things together, those tiny contradictions. I feel like I can sit there and say, I really, really, really don't like the way you act. I don't like your ideas and I don't like your actions, but I know the consciousness that you are has the potentiality slash has parts of it because you're multifaceted that are pretty good. And I would like to live in a world where I can say, hey, I kind of don't recommend people date you. I don't recommend people trust you. I, I don't recommend a lot of things about you, but I'm not going to write you off as a useless or worthless person unless you are a person who falls into that category, which is really rare. And I think we all have ideas of who that person is. For me, it's people who harm children to such a degree that it's unforgivable. I think we all know who I'm talking about here. I'm trying not to get demonetized. But for other people, it's going to be somebody else. For me, it's like the worst of the worst people in the world are people who deliberately target children as their victims. For me, that's like the worst of the worst. For other people... It's, you know, you vote Republican, you vote Democrat. Like, that's all people need sometimes to write you off. I think it's a little crazy, but everyone's entitled to their crazy. Okay, with that said, I'm going to leave it here. I'd love to hear your comments in the sections down below. I'd love to see you over in the Discord. We have multiple events happening this month. All in all, ultimately, we're trying to have a better relationship with ourselves. And that starts with asking ourselves why. Why am I upset? Why am I annoyed? And why am I triggered?
what led to this moment and how do I come back from it and how do I prevent it in the future unless, like I said, it's just appropriate to be upset. It's just appropriate to be annoyed. Knowing the difference is key. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have the most fantastic day and I will talk to you next time. Bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Da 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 da